stampers. My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. And this is my buddy Puccini. He helps me in the craft room. He just woke up from a nap. <laughs> and uh, we have a card for you today that is a thinking of you. Could be with somebody that's not feeling well. It could be just generally thinking of you or it could be sympathy and I owe a sympathy card. So uh, this is what I put together. It's very simple but I think it's very striking. So let's just get started. Here is my card and I am using some of the New Horizons paper and um, I'm using a, a different stamp set and I wanted something that was very soft and very simple and this is what I came up with and I'm really pretty pleased with the way it came out. Um, let me tell you what you need to make this card. We need a soft suede card base, eight and a half by five and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter and I stamped my birds already. <laughs> my birds were from sailing home but we're going to need to stamp a little bit more of them as we go here and then I have a piece of crumb cake that is four by five and a quarter to go on the front. Then we have a piece of evening evergreen and this evening evergreen piece is four and a quarter by three and that's going to go here and a little off to the side and then this piece of designer series paper. Now this is the paper pack for the designer series paper and these are the sheets that I'm using and I used this piece here um, to do my uh, fronts and then I just kept going along and I cut a couple of uh, three quarter inch strips here to go for the inside and I stamped some birds a couple places inside here. And if, if you haven't seen this New Horizons paper, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, Stampin' Up! has a companion uh, uh, paper pumpkin kit that's coming um, that's been delayed for shipping, but I looked this morning and they've got everything so they're on their way using this New Horizons theme, which is very, very popular and it's just gorgeous. Now, on the inside of my card, I have a piece of um, Evening Evergreen that is four by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of Very Vanilla that is a uh, three by three and three quarters by five to go on the inside. Okay, then we need a little bit of linen thread and then we have two pieces uh, for our sentiment. This is the mat for the sentiment and it is one inch by two in two and a quarter and this one is uh, two inches by I think it's three quarters, yes, three quarters of an inch for our thinking of you. So this is, like again, very simple. The only thing I thought I might do to change this is because it's pretty, um, there's not a lot of texture here. I did use the twine here, but I thought maybe we would take a uh, current embossing folder and emboss this piece of crumb cake. I decided to try this bark folder and this is what I got and I, I'm pretty pleased with that I think. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down and I think it'll make a difference in the way this appears. There's just a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture and let's see which side, I don't think it matters. Um, so I'm going to get some seal down on this card and you need quite a bit of adhesive when there's this uneven a background. So I am going to center this on the front and I left a big border by making this three and three quarters by five. All right, then the next thing we're going to do ordinarily what I would be doing is stamping my birds 
but I've already done that. And so I just need to add my seal to this piece and put it in place. And this I'm going to center on this piece of evening evergreen, hopefully getting it straight. And then we have a little bit of twine to put around the back side of this. So I'm going to add my seal to hold my twine down. And I'm going to start a piece of it right over here. And here comes my helper, I think. <laughs> oh, nope, he's going underneath. All right. And add a little bit of twine twice around, I think is plenty. I just wanted a little additional texture on here. And I'm just going to bind that on the back. Now, if you're ever worried that your adhesive won't hold those, um, your, like your linen thread or twine or whatever you're using, you can always use a bit of tape. Uh, I don't really need to do this, but I want to show you. You just use a tiny bit of scotch tape and you can secure your threads down and then you don't have to worry them. I don't do this very often, but um, uh, sometimes it makes you feel like you're, uh, you're, you've got it a little bit um, more under control uh, if, you, if you do that. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is add some dimensionals to this piece. On this piece, I am putting this center top to bottom, but a little bit to the left on my card front. And you can see how much more interesting it looks with this piece being embossed. I think it makes a world of difference and I, I like it a lot better. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add these two pieces together for the inside. And I think I can do that straight away. I have some stamping to do, but I'm pretty comfortable doing that. Uh, for those of you at home, I think sometimes we feel a little bit more comfortable doing our stamping before we put them on here. And I probably should, because any of us can make a mistake, that's for sure. But um, I've had pretty good luck with these birds. And I'm doing them in Memento ink. And in fact, maybe I'll just go ahead and do that stamping now. So I'm doing my birds in black, just getting them good and inked up until you see your ink is nice and shiny on the back side and you've got it down there pretty well. Then you can just go ahead and put your birds in place and as long as you don't rock it and, and you're careful how you put the ink on you won't get any shadows there we go now we have a little piece of this designer series paper that we're going to add to this too and so i'm going to add my seal oh and i promised to show us uh, people the other day somebody asked um, that they were having quite a bit of trouble with the seal kind of getting it started. And um, and I'll show you here. First, let me put this piece down and, and then I can show you what to do to make that a little simpler. Because you can start it on your silicone mat, but you really don't have to. Part of it is how you end putting on your seal. So I'm going to put this on so we can put it on the inside. Oh, I have to do one more bit of stamping. Okay, first let's do that. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is clean off my stamp. I want to start this with a very clean stamp. There we go. All right. Now what I'm going to do is take a post-it note. And a little birdie told me that in our new um, 
uh, catalog that's coming out, we are going to have um, masking paper. I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm going to ink this up. And I only want to get the one bird inked up. And there I've got it. Make sure I don't have any ink on my edges here. And then I'm going to stamp this one little bird right here. On the top of this paper. And there we go. Now that's real inky, so I'm going to give that a second to dry. And we'll put this ink away in the meanwhile. And we can do our other bit of stamping. And I'm doing that in Evening Evergreen. And uh, for this stamping, feel free to do your stamping first and then cut out your piece. You've got a better chance of getting it straight. Uh, and this one is, I'm doing an Evening Evergreen, and it's a Thinking of You. And this stamp comes from this one, Special Moments. It was a celebration one, but I like the Thinking of You the best. And it's right here, Thinking of You. And you can use any Thinking of You stamp that you happen to have in your stash. That was one that I particularly was fond of. And there'll be some new choices in the new catalog um, but this one if we can just get it straight and centered oh well close that's why you should do it first the other way and then cut it out there we go. Thinking of you. And then I'm going to go ahead and back that on here. And so I will show you on the back of this that once you get your seal started, most of the problem comes with how you end it. So if you come straight down your page and then tip it up way high, straight perpendicular, and check it off. What that does is it brings the next bit of tape right to the top so that you can easily grab it the next time. So even exaggerating that, pulling it all the way back and then checking it off is going to bring that tape right to the top. And I don't always remember to do it either, but um, if you do that routinely, you will have a much easier time with your seal. And so I'm going to put that on here. And that one only has to have dimensionals on this side. I'm going to add a couple of dimensionals to the back of this. Actually, one there and one just below it. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of seal to this end. And again, just checking it off. And then, let's see. Let's move some of these things out of the way. All right, there's our inside done. So now I'm going to do that. I'm going to grab my seal. I'm going to check it off way at the top here check it way off at the top and then add another piece there in the middle and if you do that your seal always comes to the top and it's a little bit easier to manage okay so there we go right on there such a pretty little card and i will tell you this was inspired by a swap that i got from wanda williams who's my upline um, and if I have a second, I'll grab her so you can see it. It's just beautiful. Um, and so there we go. There's my thinking of you. I want it to come just over the edge to bridge all the way to the dark brown there. Okay, and these are the pieces I have left. And you can see 
how easily you could mat this and do more birds and do a longer, skinnier version of this. There's any number of things you can do. I'm not going to waste one single bit of this paper because it is all just wonderful and so easy to work with. Okay, so next I used some Evening Evergreen Gems. And I have my gems here. And I'm going to place a large one right down underneath here. And then I'm going to put another couple, one on the side, this side of the screen, green on this, on the twine, pardon me, on that side. And then one, oh, right in there. And there we go. That is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. Now, the only things that we changed on here was I kept this the same size, but I uh, embossed it. And I do think it makes the card look more finished than this. If you like the plain and simple look, then you'll like this one more. But I love having texture in my cards. And then this is the inside that we did for both cards. And I'm very pleased with that. So let's see. It's the end of March. This will probably go up April 1st, uh, which means for demonstrators, we get a chance to, I think, start ordering from the new catalog. And if you're like me, you've got a wish list as long as you are. So you'll start seeing um, uh, cards put together using some of the new material uh, that demonstrators are doing and customers will be able to order. I think it's May the 3rd it is now April. So my prize draw is a $60 shopping spree on me in April. And all you have to do to put yourself in the drawing is make an order of any size on my store, lbedinger.stampinup.net. And you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. Uh, joining Stampin' Up! is always a good idea. The uh, deal is $125 worth of product for $99, and you start out with a 20% discount. And if you join in April, your first quarter, your first minimum of $300 is not you have from the time you join in April through the month of September to make that first minimum. So um, definitely think about it. The best time to join is right after a quarter starts because that gives you the most amount of time to make your minimum. So again, that's it for me and I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!